All right, welcome back to another episode of Two Plain Sports. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the Oklahoma wide receiving room. We got some pretty significant news earlier today. We're recording this on Monday. Oklahoma is making having a player switch positions to help that wide receiver room out a little bit with all the injuries that are going on and then just kind of injury updates and talk maybe a little bit towards the end about how this could affect recruiting for the 2025 class. Before we get into everything, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Let us know what you think about what we're, we're about to talk about, this football team, what you're looking for for Auburn. And our preview video will be a little bit later this week. We're going to try to get an Auburn podcast on so we can get, just like last week, some expert or someone that actually knows what they're talking about in Auburn rather than two of us dumbasses just doing an hour's worth of research. I think it's a little bit better to have someone that actually watches them consistently. Um, All right, so let's get into it. So going back to the news that we heard earlier today on Monday, Jacoby Johnson, a standout uh, high school player that from Mustang, Oklahoma, played both sides of the ball uh, at his high school, was a standout wide receiver, standout corner. Oklahoma ultimately decided that they wanted to bring him in as a corner, and he's gotten some playing time. I think he's played pretty well so far. I'm sure someone's out there is going to say he gets burned all the time because that seems to be everyone's uh, judgment on how a defensive back plays, even though that's not uh, that's what you're going to remember, but it sometimes I feel like it's just like an offensive lineman. They're, you're going to remember the one time they got beat rather than the 60 other times that they did pretty good in coverage. Um, but he's being moved to wide receiver due to just the severe injury bug that's been hitting the wide receiver room. So we all know Nick Anderson really hasn't played this this season. He got three plays in uh, in the in the Tennessee game, or if that, and then hurt for the rest of the game. Uh, Andrew Anthony still not doing well. Last week he was listed as probable, and then he didn't even he wasn't on the field to play i don't i'm not even sure he was dressed out for the game you lose a Dion burks this week hopefully that injury isn't anything crazy and then you can you're just kind of rolling in with a lot of inexperience not much there to to really help the existing quarterback situation which we we're not we're not going to touch on much today but brandon what do you think about this move for jacoby and how this can hurt or help or what this really affects for Oklahoma's wide receiving room. Yeah. So if you go back years ago now, whenever we were recruiting Kobe Johnson, I was lucky enough to, I worked some Mustang games as a camera guy for them. And then I directed some of their games. I, I had a pretty good time watching that, but I got to watch Jacoby Johnson up close and personal for two years now. And you're, you know, when he was in high school, uh, you know, obviously a standout high school player, really good both ways, but even back then I was banging the table saying he should be a wide receiver. I thought he was a lot better at receiver than he was at corner. And that's saying something because he's really good at playing corner too. And I think like you said, in his limited snatch or limited action he's had on the field this season that on, on defense, I think he's played pretty well. He's, he's a guy that's, you know, he's, he's, he's solid. He's like, he's always seems to be in the right spot. He's, he's a guy trying to make plays, but offensively, I thought at least in high school, he was really, really good. Uh, so I'm excited to see him take over at receivers where I want him to be from the jump. Um, and I think you have a lot of young DBs that you have a lot of faith in that kind of helps us move a little easier. And, you know, you look at Mike Boganowski, Jaden Hardy, uh, Eli Bowen has looked really good in his, in his action uh, with, with the Sanders defense. So I think just the plethora of, of, of options you have as far as young DBs go, it makes this move easier um, on a team standpoint to switch them over to receiver. Um, I think like we were talking off before we start recording, I don't think it bodes well for Nick Anderson for us for the season. I think, you know, them making a switch like this mid-season, we are obviously already, you know, Jalil Farouk's gone until at least past the Texas game probably. Uh, Obviously, Jaden Gibson's gone for the season. Dan Burks just got banged up. We don't know the severity of that yet. Hopefully, he's back for Auburn. Again, we haven't seen anything. Um, Who else else did we lose? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's that's a room that – you know, in the offseason, we were, we were gloating about if, if you're going to get hurt anywhere, get hurt at receiver because that is, you know, it's loaded. We're fine. And then all of a sudden the football guy said, okay, we're going to break every single receiver you have and see how fine you are then. And that's it's just the way the cookie has crumbled so far this season. Um, but Jacoby Johnson is a guy that is a very able playmaker, great frame. I think he's 6'2", 6'3". So he's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got the hands. 
it's going to be interesting, obviously, him not playing receiver for two years um, at the collegiate level and kind of seeing him. You know, how long does it take him to get back to playing receiver? Luckily, receiver and DB, you have to be running a lot. So he's going to be in shape. He's been there for two years. He should have a decent grasp of the offense. He practices against it every day. It shouldn't be like teaching him a brand new thing. Um, route running, I feel like it's, I mean, I've never played football, but it could be like riding a bike. You know, I feel like you don't just lose that ability to, to run routes. Um, I don't know how soon we'll actually see him in the game, but I mean, the kid can play. He can flat out play a receiver. I'm very excited to see it. But again, I, yeah, I think the negative side of it is I I find it hard to feel good about Nick Anderson the rest of the season now. Or you, like the Andrew Anthony thing is, is mind boggling because he's listed as probable against Tennessee, like you said, and it didn't play a snap. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if he's you know still banged up or what's going on, but we I mean we could use him back. Um, but I mean I think you know your role with Jaquez Petaway, who has shown signs of life in that Tennessee game, which is which is a very encouraging sign for this Oklahoma offense. You go him, Burks, and you go uh, maybe Jacoby Johnson. See see what it does for you. Yeah, and what Jacoby Johnson is basically bringing to this room is the size that they've lost through all of these injuries. I mean, Andrell is like six one, Nick Anderson six four, Jaden is. 6364 so you you lost a lot of your of your size with all of these injuries and there's not a lot of size there right now I mean at, you can point to Ivan Korean uh, but super young and experienced at the collegiate level not that that doesn't mean he can't he shouldn't get any playing time but if you have someone there that is a little bit more prepared to play at this level of college football probably roll him out even though he hasn't been like you mentioned practicing wide receiver more than likely for the last couple of years you hope that he can catch along pretty quickly I mean last year he came in uh, as a summer uh, enrollee and he was he didn't get a ton of playing time but he he did see the field a little bit and and the games where Oklahoma had uh, good control of so someone that the, the staff has trusted pretty early on in his career. Now he's getting, I think, a decent amount of playing time uh, to start the season. So really, it's going to be how quickly do do you see him? I think the fact that he is, again, bigger uh, compared to the wide receivers that are currently on the roster and healthy is going to bode well for him. I mean, Zion Kearney, from what I can think of, it was probably the next biggest guy. It's Ivan, now Jacoby, and then Zion. And everyone else is. You know, no, Zion Ryan like five seven. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's, he looks bigger in person than. Zion Ryan is a small dude. No, not Zion Ryan. Zion Kearney. Zion, oh Kearney, yeah, so yes. Yeah, yeah, Zion Ryan is a small dude. Yeah, That's, Zion okay. Kearney's five, five, a little bit bigger. Ryan is smaller, yeah. so. Um, I mean, we'll we'll see. I, I hope that this week isn't a lot of just putting more puzzle pieces in places they don't necessarily fit. Um, the wide receiver room with this transition, it it, do, it does appear to be in, in a bad state because of injury. I don't think it's for any other reason but that. But this offense has a lot more problems than the, than the injured wide receivers. That just is kind of like the cherry on top of the poop Sunday that they're having to deal with right now because it, it, it's just terrible with all these injuries. Now, the quarterbacks – how they figure that out. I'm sure we're going to learn more about it later this week. But if it really is a competition, who knows? Maybe they try to put Jackson Arnold out there. You know, they kind of roll the the Michigan system from early last season where it was J.J. McCarthy or uh, or not last season, but a couple of seasons ago before Cade McNamara got transferred to Iowa where Harbaugh was – going between J.J. or Cade and figuring out who was going to be his quarterback. It eventually became I think, Cade for one of the seasons. So maybe that's what we're rolling with here for the Auburn game. Hopefully that's not the case because from a fan and emotionally talking about this stuff, it's kind of frustrating to look at this. And again, I get its injuries, but you, the, the team does not look prepared to play college football five weeks into this uh, into the season, and again, I get it injuries, but the other stuff is not is also like preparation, wide receiver specifically. I think that's the one room that kind of gets that 
excuse where it just full on like injuries have taken them most of them out for like long periods of time it's not like small nagging injuries where you might want to rest them for like the week of practice to get have them ready for the game it's like these guys are going to be gone for weeks on at a time and you're even still you're hoping that can come back cleared in a matter of two three weeks yeah, no, I mean, it sucks. I mean, like, with, with Nick Anderson, you know, he's the guy that dressed for the Tulane game. Like, it looks like he could have went in that game if they needed him to. And, and I think they held him out as an extra week just just to be, like, you know, super extra cautious. And, unfortunately, he gets hurt in the third play of the game. Just just really – I mean, it sucks. It sucks a lot. I, I think it's, it's it's something you don't expect. And you just – got to roll – it is what it is. Taylor Taylor's a guy we haven't mentioned yet because he doesn't play receiver. But he's he went down in that Tennessee game as well. We don't know the severity of his – his either uh, the offense is just I mean it's plug and play it's it's so banged up at this point they're just trying to find a way to to move the ball and I think you know a lot of that again I I, I do agree with you I think I think Seth Latrell has been a little in over his head so far this season I, I mean I get the offensive line has not been great that's another banged up room on, on the team it's not the guys that we thought we'd have out there but I mean you know what you have at this point you know they're young and experienced kind of getting beat you know it doesn't look great roll the pocket do something you, you have to work with what you got we tried 75 inside zones against the teeth of that tennessee defense with a below average offensive line i think it's putting it nicely and obviously the results are the results that you're not going to run the ball in them up the middle i just uh, i i don't understand the lack of creativity in this offense at all to do anything when you know what you got you know what you're dealing with you know you're hurt at this point, you can't use it as an excuse. You have to find a way to move the ball downfield. I do think switching to Kobe Johnson to receiver, whether that's a Brent Venables idea, whether that is a Latrell, Joe John, whoever, um, Emmett Jones, whoever it might be who's, who's pitched that idea and, and ultimately looks like that's what's going to happen. I think that's showing a little bit of creativity uh try, try to, to try to see something that, that might work because um, I do, again, I think the kid's really talented at, at receiver. Um, you know, for the team overall, though, we we have Auburn this week, which, we, you know, we'll preview that a little later, like you said, Thursday or whatever, um, hopefully with, with some Auburn guys. But so I won't go too into the preview. But I, mean, I think Oklahoma is is a better team than Auburn. It's a game that we should be able to win. Defense travels. We're going to we should we should we should be able to win that game. It could be ugly, but we should be able to win. And you get to four and one. And that is going to be a very much needed by week just to give the guys two weeks to get get back as, as much as you possibly can um, and and you know give texas your best shot yeah and our own little preview of that i think you kind of mentioned there i would not be surprised if this week we just tried out the healthiest possible roster and not try to have someone rush back from injury i'm not totally convinced that that might have been the case for tennessee but Obviously, like hindsight's twenty twenty in this scenario, there's a chance that maybe a guy went out there a week too early to try to like help, you know, boost the the output of especially on the offensive side of the roster. I'm kind of mainly thinking about Nick Anderson, the fact that he didn't play very much and reaggravated his injury. Um, you know, like now probably not going to see him versus Auburn. Hopefully, this this two week rest gets him back to probably not going to be a hundred percent this football season, but 80, 90% something where he can play at a high level and hope and help his quarterback, whoever that may be um, for, I think one thing I mentioned is like recruiting, how it could impact them. Like now you're looking at a very depleted room and some of the guys that are hurt, I, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, but I think this might be Andrell's last season of eligibility. I know Jalil, he should be coming back, uh, but his, this is his last season, uh, Jalil's last season for sure. Um, checking Andrell. Andrell's a senior, so and it looks like it's a true senior according to OU's website. So maybe... Does he get an injury record if he's out for the season? Is that a thing? Or here, you use that at Michigan? How does that work? I'm not completely sure. He's I know you get just injury senior senior. Retro senior. I, know, I know you get injury redshirt if something happens if shit, shit like that happens. And you may you may be a guy that's eligible for that. I, I don't know the, the the details of that situation. Yeah. I mean at that point it'd be like, you know, is it worth it for him? I hope I hope if that if that is a possibility, I hope he does 
come back if he has, his offense game. If he has NFL ambition, I feel like it'd be worth it for him. I mean, the kid can play. The problem is he has, he doesn't have very much game tape. He, he didn't play much at Michigan. He looked fantastic last season for Oklahoma and obviously, unfortunately, towards ACL as, as a leading receiver. And then this year, for, you know, for whatever reason, he played a little bit against Temple. We haven't seen him since. And I don't know if that's He's, he's got to just be not right at the moment. You know, it just – it sucks. Um, but that's – again, I I don't know how that works for him or how that plays out. Hopefully, he's got to get back next year, but, you know, we'll see. Because I think, you know, with Dolby, I think the injury there for him, he's going to be done for the year, but I think he's eligible to come back now because because of that. Injury, Richard, for sure. Um, but back to the recruiting. I mean, in the 2024 class, excuse me, Oklahoma ended up getting four high school recruits and then Deion Brooks in the portal. Oklahoma right now in the 2025 class has four wide receiver commits. Uh, Elijah Thomas from Shakota, Oklahoma. Uh, Cortez Mills, who was making some headlines not that long ago from Homestead, Florida. Uh, you've got Trinae Washington, who is an athlete, 6'3", 195. I think I've seen a little bit more that he's probably going to be a tight end by the time he gets to Oklahoma, but if necessary, that's someone else that could play wide receiver because that's what he does at the high school level. And you got Grayson Harris and Emmanuel Choice uh, in this class as well. I would not be surprised if they dip back into the portal, maybe not go after any more high school recruits uh, just to spread those scholarships around elsewhere on the recruiting front. I think really the last guy they have that they're hoping to land at some point is Andrew Babaloa, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, a five-star offensive tackle from Kansas, you know, and that, and just kind of dip into I'll take that right now. Yeah, I, that would be nice. That would be nice to have two of those five-star guy offensive linemen for this class, but how it affects recruiting, I think, is what I'm going to be interested in. Obviously, it's a long ways away, but come December, January, when the portal is active, how hard does Oklahoma Oklahoma hit that wide receiver room? Because now you've got you got to prepare that for what ifs. Uh, I think that's going to be something that's in the back of Emmett Jones and Brent Venable's mind. Uh, probably the running back room. I know that coming into the season, like like you mentioned earlier, Taylor Tatum is hurt. Who knows the severity of that as of right now? Hopefully, it's nothing crazy. He can come back this week or uh, for the Texas game. I would not be surprised if you see a name or two go into the transfer portal from Oklahoma. This is obviously just us kind of speculating from how performances have been. Um, but like Gavin Sotrick just hasn't looked great. I hope that's not the case with him, but it wouldn't surprise me either, especially if the offensive line can't get fixed sooner rather than later. It's like you've mentioned every time we talk about him, he's a great running back, but he's someone that needs – the, the way him being such a patient runner doesn't really go into how Oklahoma – is needing a running back to play right now because of how bad the offensive line has been. They need someone just to hit the first hole they see and hit it as hard as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the case with the, with the with the room right now. I mean, ultimately the the injuries are horrible. You know, we're hurt everywhere at receiver right now. Taylor Tatum's gone. We don't know what's going to happen at quarterback. I think a lot of us, you know, feel for Jack Starman, but you want it to be Michael Hawkins because he showed some life there. He showed some connection with guys that Jackson doesn't have right now. Uh, Jaquez Petaway specifically is a guy that, you know, we think has all the talent in the world. And for some reason, he and Jackson could not get on the same page. Um, and Hawkins seemed to not have that issue. I mean, Jaquez Petaway looked like a player for the first time in his Oklahoma career um, with with Hawk at quarterback. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, J the, the Jacoby Johnson move was helpful. Hopefully Deion Brooks isn't too badly hurt. Hopefully Andrell, um, again, we don't know what situation. Hopefully he's on the field soon. And um, but that's all the 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 uh, that's all like the 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 quick band-aid fix is trying to get guys a healthy at receiver and stuff. Because the the major issue for the team right now is that offensive line. You know, unfortunately during the season, I I don't think that's something that you're going to really be able to fix at the level that you want it to be fixed. You know, it's not going to be the Oklahoma offensive line that we're used to seeing this year. I think it's going to be patchwork all the way through and just try to field the best five you can get and win as many games you can and kind of look towards next year as where you really solidify that, that, that offensive line group. Um, you know, all that being said, I said, it, I said it on our show today, that's out or, you know, I still think this is a team that can win nine games and that's, you know, if they go out there and win nine games this year with this offense as beat up as it is with the offensive line as beat up as it is as, as poorly as it's played, 
Um, I think you really go into next season and you feel really damn good about your chances. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, and we're probably being – some we're going to say that we're being sunshine pumpers because of the performance they just saw after Tennessee and really during the Houston game too. Uh, but this defense gives you a reason to believe that, that there's a there's a way to nine – nine and in, in a in a dream scenario probably 10 wins for this team i think that's kind of where they're gonna max out there's i don't see a world where they just don't lose another game because they can't keep up offensively as of right now um, the last question i had for people watching and for you because it's something that i titled the video last week um not the defense one that seems to have people just bitching so hard but anyways the do you think that if Oklahoma, let's just say that eight wins is the bar, if Oklahoma wins less than eight games, does everyone on the offensive side of the, of the ball, meaning the staff, should they be on the hot seat or should it be a select group of people? Is it one or two guys that are that, that might not be coming back next season? What, what are your thoughts? I think the only two that are going to be safe if that happens is DeMarco Murray and Emma Jones. I think everybody else has a legitimate opportunity to be, to be shipped on out of here. Um, and I think it's unfortunate, you know, cause I, I, this team is definitely not healthy and, and, you know, they, these, all these offensive staffers have that argument, you know, like we're, we're not playing with the staff or with the guys that we thought we'd have. And that, but that's, I mean, at the end of the day, that that's the nature of football. And unfortunately, you, you don't normally see it as bad as, as it has hit Oklahoma, but that's what has happened to us this season. And, you know, you have to be able to adapt and and still have an offense, you know, no matter what, especially at, at such a high level. Because even the guys that don't start for Oklahoma, the guys that we recruit are, are highly recruited kids for the most part everywhere. You should be able to plug and play and at least have some sort of, offense going. And right now that has just not been the case. Uh, again, we saw a little bit of it with Hawkins. Uh, he, he, he flashed a little bit, showed a little bit of life. And that's kind of what we're clinging to right now. He, he brought us back in, against the Tennessee team, had a chance to make it a one score game late in a game that we absolutely did not belong being in there at all. And, you know, defensively they were there, but the offense, we, we should have lost that game 25 to three with, with how bad the offense was, you know, he, he showed some life. Um, that's it is what it is right now but yeah i mean 100 i think if we go we go seven and five or six and six six and six i think the entire offensive staff with the exception of murray and jones are probably gone i mean i don't know i think be might be retained just because of he has he has two top 100 tackles in the 2025 class and you know you you, you don't want to risk losing those guys especially with how the offensive line is like this season but I mean, just because Bill Beatonville leaves doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone. If you're, if you're, if you're uh, Ryan Foji or your or your Fasusi right now, and you're watching this, you know, you you've got to be kind of licking your chops in a way. Obviously, it sucks. You you, you want to see your your future school look better than they are right now offensively. But yeah, if you're Foji or your Fasusi, you're watching this like, man, there's zero reason that I can't start as a tackle year one. Yeah, I think that that that's really the biggest question that needs to be that is in my head at least like where's the line for when Brent Venable just says I gotta fire every single one of these guys um, or at least bring you know fire Latrell and Finley let them go and then whoever I bring in just let them know like hey these are the guys that I'd really like to stay on to the staff because they've done a great job for Oklahoma and this roster but kind of understand as well like more often than not when you hire when a new offensive coordinator is brought in they get to bring in some of their own guys just like what Brent Venables did when he came on as the head coach and what he's done uh, gotten to do as a defensive coordinator in the past you get to bring in your own guys to work with uh, and have some sort of chemistry in, at, at your new school well obviously that that's a long ways away from now we're talking about you know potential hot seats at the end of September and because this Oklahoma offense has looked so bad and it's uncharacteristic of this school, this program has had great offenses really forever. And this is probably one of the few times in Oklahoma's history where the offense is piss poor. And the reason that they might lose more games than they should. Yeah. It's, 
It sucks. I mean, again, I think I think you roll with Hawk. I think you find a decent enough offense. I still think you win nine games. But yeah, I, I mean, if you if you don't, there's it's it's a thing. I think, and because at some point, Brent Venables has to think about his own job security, right? I mean, he's done incredible work with the defense. Like it's it's. I mean, it's 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 an elite level defense now. We haven't been able to say that in fucking twenty years. You know, something like since two thousand, over twenty years. You did that. We legitimately have a a a tough, scary defense, but, and that's that's nice. And even you know, next year looking forward, you lose guys like Stutz and Bowman, and that does. I mean, that absolutely sucks. But the guys that are coming to replace them have played a lot this season. And you know, when when Stutz is not on the field, it's not like you're missing a beat really. But with Lewis Carter out there, or Kit Lewis, or you know, even almost Seagulls out there making plays. And then that DB room is is just disgusting. Still. I mean, Peyton Bowen is Peyton Bowen. Eli Bowen looks like he's going to be a fucking clone of Peyton, you know, just in terms of ability. So I think that defense is going to be – has the potential to just pick right up. It's not going to miss anything despite losing guys like Stutz and Bowman. Um, so Brett Venables knows his defense is going to be what it is, but, you know, he is the head coach. He's not the defensive coordinator. So he does have to put a little more thought into this offense. And, he, he I mean, he's he's been in Oklahoma for a long time. You know, even before his, his stint as a head coach, now he was there when they won a title. He he knows what Oklahoma offense looks like, what it should look like, and I, I mean, he's he's smart enough to realize that as the head man, you know, if they go seven and five this year because the offense is so bad and the defense is so good, I mean, he's he's going to be smart enough to realize, hey man, if I go seven and five again or six and six in year two in the SEC, like I, I might be a Nazi here despite having this fantastic defense, and he's going to really have to, you know, look at the staff, look at the player, look, you know. Figure it out. And I think he's, I mean, he's smart enough to do it. If you look at his year one to year two in the Big 12, you know, crazy difference. That's a team last year that should have won 12 and 0. This year, you know, you're beat up, you're banged up, you got, you know, you, you might not have the right OC. We, we don't know, you know, and stuff. And if the season doesn't go the way we want it to, I, I, I 100% think he's smart enough to be like, all right, there's changes to be made because I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's his job security too. I think he's safe no matter what this year. Um, but you know, if, if the offense is, is, if the offense remains terrible all season and then it's terrible next year and you're on that seven, five, six, eight win mark, uh, he's, that's not the standard here. And he, he realizes that. And I think he's going to know yeah, I could be in trouble. So I think, you know, this, this off season, the rest of the season offensively is going to be big, big for BV. Yeah, big for a lot of coaches on the staff. I think that the, uh, some people may disagree, but that just seems like the the blatant truth there with the performances on the offensive side of the ball so far. That that's it to wrap it up for this video. Let us know what you think about the wide receiver room, about this last question that we probably talked a little bit more than I expected to at least about with what would constitute any of the staff, but mainly the offensive side of the ball to be on the hot seat or immediately let go at the end of the of the season let us know your thoughts make sure to like comment subscribe uh, turn on the notification bell so you know when we post a new video follow us on all the links down below everything is for, from social media to spotify apple music is all down there we appreciate you all listening and watching we'll see you next time